This wasn't an ordinary aviation incident. This was the moment the world realized no matter how advanced the technology it can be rendered useless by a 0.4 drilling error. An A380 carrying 469 bombs turned into a flying bomb within seconds. The hell you doing? I've been but just the most terrifying part wasn't the technical failure. It was the truth that safety systems collapsed. Yet humans didn't. This is the story of the aviation industry is rather Just five minutes turned an aerial monument into a flying bomb. The aircraft deemed unbreakable collapsed just five minutes after takeoff. The explosion on the left wing didn't just shake the frame, it exposed a truth technology praised as invincible was in fact fragile to the core. In that moment, every passenger became hostage to a rogue machine. This wasn't a single incident. This was a warning shot about technological arrogance. The problem wasn't the aircraft's size or altitude. It was the blind trust that size and systems could protect you. The truth is, when one link breaks, the system doesn't help you manage it, leaves you alone. And on this flight, the system betrayed them. Instead of being a companion, it became a silent attacker. And only those who questioned convenience stood a chance of survival. One explosion, a jolt to the left, then a downpour of warnings. As the plane lurched, no one thought of AI or automation. They thought of death. That instinct was right. Because the only thing you can count on in the air is nerve, not software. Systems support you when things are fine. But when it all collapses, the only thing left is your ability to stay calm and act inside hell. The systems advertised as fail-proof betrayed us. This aircraft operated on systems that learn self-correct, self-optimize. But when Engine 2 exploded, 21 other systems went down with it. No auto-recovery happened. No optimization kicked in. Everything failed like dominoes with no brakes. At that point, the question wasn't what's broken. It was what's still alive. That's what every expert must understand. Technology does not rescue itself. EKM, the centralized electronic monitoring system was supposed to be their best ally. But in this event, it acted like a panicked assistant flooding the cockpit with over a hundred alerts with no prioritization. Pilots didn't need more data. They needed hierarchy, but the system offered none. Because it was designed to react to failures, not help humans survive. This is the fundamental design flaw. We were wrong to believe more data equals more solutions. In a crisis, too many signals create chaos, not clarity. This event proves that a system built to cover everything backfires when users only need one thing, an escape path. That's the difference between a systems engineer and someone flying a burning aircraft. A perfect system is one that knows when to shut up. When the outside world believes you're already dead, shrapnel from the engine dropped onto Batam homes. Civilians panicked. Media jumped in. Rumors spread instantly the A380 had crashed. No confirmations. Yet everyone shared it. Within minutes, the world declared 469 people dead. That's the power of media part warning bell, part executioner. Meanwhile, at seven 400 feet, the flight was still fighting for survival. In the cockpit, they had no idea they'd been pronounced dead in the news. 
All they knew, fuel was leaking, warning alarms were non-stop, and there was no time to reply to cabin calls. Isolated from the world, they had no media, no clean radar, no continuous data. But they had one thing, a survival mindset. And in that silence, they did what few can refuse to let headlines determine their fate. The dead don't know they've been counted. The living must fight to be recounted. That's the modern truth. You don't die from impact. You die when systems assume you're finished. But as long as you breathe, you have a choice. As long as you fly, you have a chance. As long as you stay aware, you can rewrite the headlines. Survival doesn't need applause. It needs ruthless focus even when the world thinks you're gone. Don't ask what's broken. Ask what's still alive. In a moment flooded with alerts, the crew did something no training had prepared them for reverse logic. They didn't ask what's failed. They asked what still works. That decision, decision was pivotal. When systems fail, human thinking must seize control. And the only way to reclaim control is to list what resources remain amid the wreckage. There was no room for theory, only the will to survive. This strategy didn't just save them. It revealed the ugly truth not every protocol is built to save lives. When 100 plus alerts hit at once, you can't process them step by step. You must triage by instinct, experience, resolve. This isn't taught in manuals. It requires the audacity to abandon instructions. Sometimes it's the defiance of structure that opens the only door to survival. Not everyone has the guts to do this. Most fear being wrong more than being dead. But the truth is, following procedures inside a collapsing system is scheduled suicide. Survivors are those who prioritize with bold judgment. They don't wait for approval. They don't ask the system's permission. They redefine authority. And the core lesson here, when everything fails, your ability to filter and act becomes the last rescue system left. Not the smallest crack in history shattered all calculations. A 0.4 millimeter drilling deviation in a factory triggered the disaster. No sabotage, no attack, just a drill hole. That was enough. Because one side of the oil pipe was thinner than designed high pressure hot oil leaked and ignited inside the engine. A massive explosion shattered the turbine disc, launching fragments into the wing fuel tank and hydraulic control wiring. It didn't begin with a siren. It began with a failure in microscopic quality control. Never believe tiny components don't cause massive consequences. In engineering, a pinhole error can destroy a billion dollar system. Worse, hundreds of other engines out there may carry the same flaw. This wasn't just one flight's crisis. It was a direct challenge to industrial manufacturing today. When speed is prioritized over precision, disaster becomes a matter not of if, but when. Technical deviations don't kill, but the tolerance for deviation does. Entire industries accept just enough risk to boost production lower cost. In aviation, just enough is never enough. One tiny flaw put 469 lives within seconds of death. That price is unacceptable. And if the industry doesn't change, there will be more invisible cracks waiting to detonate. This wasn't a drill. It was war between two layers of sky. You can simulate an engine failure. You can train to fly through storms, but you cannot rehearse for 21 systems crashing at once. No model prepares you for a plane with a ruptured wing, leaking fuel, lost brakes, and skewed center of gravity. What you're left with is the will to survive. And that will not degrees or hours logged is what kept the A380 airborne for two hours.
In the cabin, people were uneasy. In the cockpit, it was pure survival mode. They manually tested control surfaces, redistributed fuel tried settings no one had trained for. They operated a high-tech aircraft like it was mechanical. In doing so, humans outperformed machines. When automation collapsed, raw individual skill was the only thing left holding altitude. They didn't keep flying out of bravery. They did it because landing then would have killed everyone. The weight imbalance, unreliable brakes, jammed flaps. It wasn't the time for luck. It was the time to delay death as long as possible. In that delay, every micro decision became an act of rebellion. No one promised survival, but as long as they were in the air, they had a shot to flip the outcome. A single miscalculation in landing meant total explosion. The aircraft was overweight. Fuel couldn't be dumped. One wing was damaged. Engine thrust was uneven. Only one engine had reverse thrust. Performance software said it would take almost the full 4,000 meter runway to stop. Only 130 meters left to spare. That's the death zone. Overshoot by seconds explode beside a leaking fuel tank. They had no margin for error. Every digit mattered. They asked air traffic control for a final approach twice as long as usual. They needed time to configure systems manually, balance, lift, adjust power. Once they began descent, there would be no second chances. One misstep equals mass casualty. This wasn't landing. This was high-risk surgery where even the smallest error ends in disaster. No computer told them what to do next. They flew by feel. They judged by instinct. They calculated with their nerves. This was not skill. This was survival intelligence. No simulator prepares you for this. Only lived experience does. And that experience honed through thousands of hours, determined life or death. Not because they were lucky, but because they allowed zero room for failure to squeeze in. The landing that made the world hold its breath. As the A380 lined up for landing, danger lurked everywhere. A hard touchdown could snap landing gear. A snap could cause a skid. A skid near leaking fuel could ignite fire. But a gentle touchdown might cause overshoot and runway exit. Between too hard and too soft, there was only one precise line. They had to land on it or burn. At the last second, the pilot did the unthinkable. He pushed the control stick forward. Textbooks say that's wrong, but he did it anyway. It worked. It created a cushion of air under the plane, softened the fall, prevented breakage. In that paradox, they found survival. It wasn't technique. It was instinct. And instinct, when guided by clarity, beats training manuals. The plane stopped just hundreds of feet from the runway's end. Passengers erupted in relief. But it wasn't over. The left brake temperature topped 900 degrees C. Fuel still leaked underfoot. One spark and a fireball. In the cabin, they applauded. In the cockpit, they stayed focused. Because the true enemy wasn't the crash. It was early celebration inside an unresolved emergency. The engine wouldn't shut down. It was supposed to explode. All switches were off. Screens said the engine was off. But outside, engine one was still spinning. One engine totally out of control, operating beside leaking fuel and burning hot brakes. There's no checklist for this. This wasn't a system error. It was full mechanical mutiny. A break inside the controls had made the engine independent, and that rogue machine was seconds from incinerating everything. They tried everything. 
cut power, pulled circuit breakers, changed fuel flow. Nothing worked. The engine was running on its own, disconnected from control logic, like a wild animal unchained. All modern systems worth billions became useless. They weren't flying anymore. They were taming a monster that didn't want to stop. It took three hours of continuous foam and water spray to silence it. Not by control, by exhaustion. The engine stopped only because it ran out of fuel and heat. This wasn't system success. This was an archaic brute force rescue of a machine that should have been intelligent, but went berserk. If that doesn't wake you up about over automation, nothing will. This lesson is not for those asleep in their role. This wasn't an accident. It was a test, a test of judgment, mindset, and nerve. Every system failed, but the people didn't. Had the crew followed protocol blindly, everyone would have died. What saved them wasn't technology or training. It was the decision to break the rules at the right moment. The lesson is clear between life and death. Those who dare to act beyond instruction rewrite history. Not everyone deserves control. Not because of lack of skill, but lack of awareness. Automation is making people lazy, but tech doesn't solve chaos. It reacts. When everything collapses, you don't need more data. You need someone bold enough to lead calm enough to decide and brave enough to be wrong when right means death. This flight ended safely. But if you think it proved aviation is perfect, you've misunderstood. It proved this when backup fails, when systems crash, when code malfunctions. Human clarity still has the final say. Systems will fail. Protocols will glitch. Only people fully awake in their role can turn the impossible into survival. That flight didn't just survive. It shattered every belief in technology, procedures, and the illusion of system invincibility. While the world blindly trusted machines, it was human instinct, imperfect, irrational, defiant, that saved everyone on board. Not protocol, but willpower. Not software, but sheer resolve. And if you think this was a rare exception, you're lying to yourself. Disaster doesn't start with catastrophe. It starts with complacency. The system will fail again. The real question is, next time, who will be clear-headed enough to defy it before it's too late?